Dear viewers, I welcome you to Maulana Azad National Urdu University. This is Dr. K. Nagendra, Assistant Professor, Department of English. Today, I am going to talk about one of the important lessons in first semester of MA in English, that is History of English Language and Literature. The topic which I am going to deal with, the nature and origin of the language. Let me begin with uh, by talking about the origin of the language. Many scholars have done a wide range of studies in the origin of the language. Some of them even looked at the problem whether the primitive man had the psychological capacity to speak or not. But no one knows exactly how language originated. And because of this, there is no speculations about the origins of human speech. Various theories have been suggested with regards to the origin of the language. The majority of these theories can be grouped under three broad categories. Creation or divine origin, evolutionary development and third one, invention. Let me highlight how human language differs from other communication. The claim that language is human specific implies that there are certain characteristics of human language that are not found in any other species. Animals communicate limited way and its communication is stimulus bound while human language is not. Experiments to teach animals more complicated systems have a history of failure. Before we talk about uh, even more specifications of okay, the difference between animal communication and human's language, let me highlight uh, some definitions of language. Most common people define language as means of communication. Let me highlight some of the definitions which were given by linguists and grammarians. According to Hockett in the year 1958, language is the most valuable single possession of the human race. Each one of us makes use of the language, gain virtually everything we do. The use of language is an integral part of being human. Humboldt has even gone to the extent saying that man is man through the use of language alone. Let me talk about other definitions. The term language has been defined differently by different people. Let us look at some of these definitions to understand what language is. Sapphire in the year 1921 says, Language is purely human and non-instructive method of communicating ideas, emotions and desires by means of voluntarily produced symbols. Brown, another important linguist, describes language is the most sophisticated and versatile means available to human beings for the communication of meaning. And let me talk about uh, Dragger, what he said in his words, language is. A language is a system of arbitrary vocal symbols by means which the members of a society interact in terms of their total culture. And another famous linguist, R. H. Robbins, describes, language is a form of communication by means of system of symbols, principally transmitted by vocal sounds. Formkin and Rodman in the year 1974 define language as language is the system by which sounds and meanings are related. Mario Pai and Frank Gaynor in the year 1954 in their famous book called Dictionary of Linguistics defined 
language is a system of communication by sound that is through the organs of speech and hearing among human beings of a certain group or community using vocal symbols possessing arbitrary conventional meanings. Let me highlight the definition which was given by Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary in the year 1989. It says language means a system of sounds, words, patterns, etc. used by humans to communicate thoughts and feelings. Let me highlight what are the functions of language. Language enables humans to do many things, thus serving different functions in the society. Finch in the year 1998 lists seven general functions, psychological function, phatic function, recording function, identifying function, reasoning function, communicating function and last but not least that is pleasure function. I wanted to talk about uh, what are the different theories which are based on origin of the language. Let me begin with one of the important theories uh, named the divine source theory. According to one view, God created Adam and Eve. Whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name of thereof. Genesis 2nd chapter 19th verse. Coming to Hindu tradition, language came from Goddess Saraswati, wife of Brahma and creator of universe. Every society has a divine story to tell about the origin of its language. And another important theory which exists, the evolutionary theory. The evolutionary theory believes that language evolved as an addition to early communication. Examples like pointing, gesturing, grunting, imitation of animal sounds. Let me talk about another important theory, the natural sound source theory, which is also known to be bow wow theory. This theory is based on the concept of natural sounds. This theory suggests that first words were imitations of the natural sounds, which early men and women heard around them. Echo naturally occurring sounds are cuckoo, bang, buzz, splash, hiss, rattle and bow wow. Echoic or onomatopoeia, another argument against this theory is that our language also seems to influence the way we hear and imitate the sounds of nature. Examples, the roasters crow, cock a doodle in English, kukurkar in Hindi, kikirke in German. Another important theory which exists and which talks about the origin of the language, the Poo Poo Theory. In the year 1871, in his famous book, The Descent of Man, Darwin proposed that like man himself, his language also developed from a more primitive form. Examples, expressions of emotions puffing of air through the nostrils or the mouth and this action makes sounds like poo or pish. The critics of Darwin's theory scornfully named it the poo poo theory. Another important theory which exists and talks about the origin of the language that is the ding dong theory. 
Muller, a contemporary of Darwin, proposed the ding-dong theory of the origins of the language. According to this theory, there was a mystic relationship between sound and meaning. Examples, all the sounds made by objects. The sight of a snake rang a bell and the primitive human automatically said, snake. Another important theory which talks about the origin of the language that is the yo he ho theory. This theory says the speech started with the rhythmic chants and grunts people used to coordinate their physical actions when they work together. There is a pretty big difference between this kind of thing what we do most of the times with language. Next important theory that is the Tata theory. According to this theory, the speech came from the use of tongue and mouth gestures to mimic manual gestures. For example, saying Tata is like waving goodbye with your tongue. But most of the things we talk about do not have characteristic gestures associated with them, much less gestures you can imitate with the tongue and mouth. Last but not least, that is the Lala theory. This theory believes that the speech emerged from the sounds of inspired playfulness, love, poetic sensibility and song. This tone is lovely and no more or less likely than any of the others. Let me highlight like how all these theories came to conclusion. It is a big puzzle how language has begun, but why language begun seems to be very clear. Language must have evolved because humans needed it for the following purposes. First thing, to give factual information and convey commands. Second important reason why humans need language to convey emotions and feelings. Third important point to maintain social contact on a friendly level. Fourth for aesthetic like poetry. Fifth one to relieve nervous tension. So for all these reasons humans need a language. It's very clear. Let us compare the difference between human language and animal communication. First, let me begin with use of sound signals. Use of sound signals, most obvious characteristic of human language. It is not unique because animals also use sounds for communication. Human beings can transfer language to visual symbols examples like sign language or writing. And take another example, tactile, that is sense of touch, symbols in the case of Braille. Another important feature which differentiates human language from animals communication, that is arbitrariness. In the case of animals, there is an apparent relation between the signal and the message the animal wishes to convey. For example, an animal who wishes to warn off an opponent will stimulate an attacking attitude. A cat, for example, will arch its back, spit and appear ready to pounce. The symbols used by human beings are arbitrary. Examples, water in English, in Hindi, Pani and Jal. It appears that the role played by learning in animal communication is very little. Human beings require a long exposure to language 
in order to acquire it. According to Chomsky, human beings are born with innate learning acquisition device, but environment plays an important role in triggering this innate ability. Every normal child learns an ex extremely complex grammatical system before he or she is three years old. Another important feature which differentiates the difference between animal communication and human's language that is displacement. Most animals can communicate about things in the immediate environment only. A bird utters its cry of danger when danger is present. It cannot give information about a danger which is removed in time and place. Human beings on the other hand can communicate about things that are absent as easily about things that are present. This phenomenon is known as displacement. Most animals have a fixed number of messages which are sent in clearly definable circumstances. For example, a North American Cicida can give only four messages and a male grasshopper has a choice of six expressions. Research conducted on dolphins, birds and bees has also shown that they are unable to say anything new. Human beings on the other hand can talk about anything they like. They can produce and understand utterances which they never produced or heard before. It is also not necessary that the same situation would make them utter the same thing each time. Creativity is an important characteristic which distinguishes human communication from animal communication. Animals who use sound signals for communicating have a finite set of basic sounds. The number of basic sounds varies from species. For example, cows have less than 10, whereas foxes have over 30. Most animals use each basic sound only once or occasionally few simple combinations of these basic sounds. This means that the number of messages that an animal can convey is almost limited to the number of basic sounds that animal possesses. In contrast, human language works very differently. Every language has a set of 30 to 40 basic sounds which are called phonemes. These phonemes are generally meaningless in isolation. Imagine a person uttering the basic sounds like a, k, u, t, v, r, l, y, h. Do you think it would be possible for the person to convey any meaning? I do not think so. These basic sounds or phonemes become meaningful only when combined with each other in accordance with the rules of a language. So, we can say that human language is organized into two levels or layers that is a layer of individual sounds which combine with each other to form the second layer of bigger units like words. This kind of organization into two layers is called duality or double articulation. Close to the phenomenon of duality is patterning. As you are aware, most animal systems of communication comprise a simple list of sounds. There does not seem to be any internal organization within the system. 
human language on the other hand as well defined internal patterns. There are firm restrictions on which elements examples like sounds, words, etc. can occur together and in which order. For example, take the letters O, P, T, Yes, in English. These letters can be arranged in the following six ways only. Spot, stop, part, parts, top and tops. Other possibilities like TASP, PARTS, OPST are not possible because the rules of English do not allow these. Similar kind of patterns are followed when words are combined to form sentences. Human beings instinctively understand the pattern nature of language and manipulate structured chunks of language. Example, they understand that a group of words can be at times the structural equivalent of one word. Consider the following sentences. The boy who proposed to me gave a bunch of flowers. He gave me a really beautiful bunch of flowers. The chunk can be arranged according to the rules of the language. For example, the rule of passivization. A bunch of flowers was given to me by the boy who proposed to me. Human language has many more characteristics besides the ones discussed above. These are generally not unique to humans. Some of these are interchangeability. Any speaker or sender of a linguistic signal can also be a listener or receiver, which we cannot see in animals communication. The next important feature that is rapid fading. Auditory signals are transitory they disappear very quickly. The next important feature which differs from animals communication is spontaneous usage. Speaking is not something which humans do under any compulsion. They speak spontaneously and out of their own will. Next important feature turn taking. Human take turns while talking. Another important feature of human's language is specialization. Vocal signals are used for conveying meaning only. They do not normally serve any other type of purpose such as breathing or feeding. Another important feature of human's communication is complete feedback. Speakers of vocal signal receive the message themselves. These are all the important features and characteristic features which differs from animal communication which we do not find in any other species communication. Let me recall what we have discussed so far. The first important point which we discussed in this video lecture is the origin of the language. The second important point which we discussed in this video lecture is specific features of human's language. Third one is introduction to language. There we talked about so many definitions what language is. And afterwards we also highlighted by talking about the definitions of the language. And we talked about functions of language. Finally, we concluded by talking about different theories of origin of the language and the characteristics of
human language thanks for watching i hope you had a great session let me come back with uh, another important topic which will give us a lot of information till then bye bye take care